Hello everyone, and welcome to another video on our own devices. I'm Gilles Messier, and full disclosure, I've recently started using AI tools to make my workflow more efficient, though you probably wouldn't have noticed if I hadn't told you. Technology is amazing. Hello everyone, and welcome to another video on our own devices. I'm Jean Messier. And today we are concluding our series on Canadian and British NBCW or CBRN equipment with a look at some of the accessories a soldier would carry in order to maintain their CBRN equipment or detect and treat the effects of chemical weapons. Now, these accessories would be carried along with the gas mask and CBRN suit in their respective carrier pouches. And to learn more about the design and development of said equipment, please check out the previous two videos in the series. Now, the first item we're going to look at would have been carried with the C3 gas mask, and this is known as an anti-dimming kit. And this contains a compound intended to be applied to the inside of the gas mask eyepieces in order to prevent them from fogging up. Now, because of the internal oronasal mask, which isolated the mouth and nose from the eyepieces, this really wouldn't have been necessary except for with the oldest gas mask maintained in inventory. Now, the C3 kit would also have contained a cloth and wad of cotton waste to decontaminate the mask, a set of fiberboard tags to identify the mask and wear, a whip cord to prevent the mask from falling off, and a variety of items for protecting against and treating the effects of chemical weapons. Now, originally, this would have consisted of a set of cellulose acetate eye shields or goggles and a tin or tube of anti-gas ointment, both designed for use against mustard gas. But later, the latter would have been replaced by Reactive Skin Decontamination Lotion Kits, or RSDL, which are individually packaged wipes designed to neutralize most common chemical warfare agents. Now, as nerve agents became more of a pressing concern, countermeasures against those started being issued. And originally, this would have consisted of serrets of atropine sulfate. Now, atropine is the standard antidote for organophosphate poisoning, both in the form of military nerve agents and civilian pesticides, while a serrette is a little metal squeeze tube fitted with a hypodermic needle, and these were commonly used during the Second World War for administering morphine. In the 1970s, however, serrettes were replaced by spring-loaded auto-injectors or combo pens, which were a lot easier to use in a self-help situation and could more easily penetrate the thick cloth of a CBRN suit. And here we have a variety of examples, including a Ruana Research Corporation Atropen, a Haleco Germany project, and a well-known civilian product derived from military combo pens, the EpiPen. Now, there are a wide variety of combo pens issued by militaries around the world, including some that inject pralidoxime or HI6 along with the atropine, and separate units that inject a sedative or anticonvulsant like diazepam or midazolam, for example, the convulsive antidote for nerve agent or HANA. Also issued are nerve agent pretreatment or NAPS tablets, which contain pyridostigmine bromide or PB. And as the name implies, these are a prophylactic treatment meant to be taken once every six hours for 48 hours before entering a potentially contaminated area. Finally, the C3 carrier would have contained a variety of items for detecting chemical warfare agents in the field. Originally, this would have consisted of a set of gas detection brassals or armbands, and these were developed during the Second World War and widely issued to Allied troops during Operation Overlord, as it was feared that the Germans would make use of chemical weapons to halt the invasion. So these were worn on the upper arm, and they turned red or pink in the presence of mustard gas. But eventually, these were replaced by various types of liquid chemical agent detector papers, which we previously covered in my videos on the L1, A1, C2, and M256A1 chemical agent detector kits. And these were designed to be dipped in suspected liquid chemical agents and were unable to detect aerosolized chemical warfare agents in the air. And some had self-adhesive backing so they could be stuck to various surfaces or even a CBR suit. To learn more about that, please check out the previous video in the series. So the British number one Mark II North American equivalent M8 paper is a three-way detector paper which turns orange on contact with G nerve agents such as sarin and taboon, green on contact with V nerve agents like VX, and red on contact with H blister agents like mustard gas. Whereas the number two Mark I paper North American equivalent M9 turns red on contact with any of these agents but does not indicate which one it is detecting. 
And finally, we have our detector, chemical agent nerve vapor, or NAVD, which can detect aerosolized nerve agents. So this consists of a little circle of chemically treated filter paper in a plastic casing, and this is designed to be broken open and waved through the air. Now, if no nerve agents are present, this is going to turn blue or green, but if nerve agents are present, then it remains white. And to learn more about the chemistry behind this process, please check out my video on the M256A1 chemical agent detector kit. Moving on, we have a pair of corrective combat spectacles, which are specifically designed to be worn under a gas mask. And as you can see, the temples have been replaced with elastic bands and metal ear loops so that the glasses don't break the seal at the back of the mask. And this particular pair belongs to my good friend Gord Crossley, who used to be a CBRN instructor and who provided some of the items and a lot of the information featured in this video. Next, we have a set of decontamination items, specifically a British Decontamination Kit Personal, or DKP-1, a DKP-2, and a Canadian Decontamination Mitt. And these are fiber pads filled with something called Fuller's Earth, which is a type of fine-grained clay powder, typically bentonite, so named because it used to be used for the process of fulling, that is, removing the lanolin and other oils from wool before it was spun into yarn. And this is very absorbent, and the idea is that you would pull these pads out of the package and pat them down over your CBRN suit, whereupon the Fuller's Earth would absorb the chemical warfare agents and could be wiped off. And indeed, the British kit comes with the very useful mnemonic, Watt Bang Rub. And the DKP2 kit is simply a squeeze bottle full of more Fuller's Earth to supplement that in the DKP1 kit. So the last piece of equipment I have to show you today is this support kit overhead protection or scope kit. And this is used to build a temporary fallout shelter on the battlefield. So this consists of a plastic drop sheet with tie downs and metal ground anchors. And what you're supposed to do is dig a trench, stretch the ground sheet over the top using the ground anchors, and then pile dirt over top. This is going to provide you with protection against fallout entering the trench and a limited amount of shielding against direct irradiation. So as you can see, surviving on the CBRN battlefield requires a lot of very specialized equipment and for soldiers to put a lot more thought into even the simplest activities. And so I think we can all be thankful that these sorts of weapons have not really been widely used in over 80 years. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching and a huge shout out to Gord Crossley and Dirk Darren for loaning me all of the equipment featured in this series. I'll see you next time on another video where we'll look at yet more military equipment and other fascinating devices just like these. Until then, I'm Jean Messier from Our Own Devices. Have a great day.